So in this video, I'm going to tell you how I modified the aluminum extrusion frame a little bit since my last video to make it work a bit better. And then also how the new CNC 2.0 is actually working. So one of the first things I decided I needed to change with the new CNC is a way to hold down the timing belts. Um, before I was taking the belts and I was actually screwing them up into the aluminum extrusion and it was really smashing the belts and tearing them up really bad uh, and it was really hard to tension them. So I kind of came up with uh, this new method of tightening the belts and securing them by using a little bit of an L bracket here so I could pull the uh, timing belt out, get it really tight and then tighten this T-nut right there and smash the belt down and that way it, the belt's not moving, it's in there pretty secure but it's also not fraying the ends of the belt. So that's one thing I did and I did it on all four corners of the machine to, uh, to just give a little bit more uh, long lasting life of the timing belts. The next big thing I added was this long piece of aluminum extrusion on the inside of the CNC. Now whenever this is all said and done you're not going to be able to see it. This is going to help support the MDF that's going to be the, uh, the bed of the machine. And uh, I installed this just using scrap pieces of aluminum extrusion I had lying around. I didn't want to have to buy anything special for this. As you can see here, the new CNC setup has a lot more range in the Z-axis than my old one did. Um, that way I can get bigger stock underneath it. I can, um, can go deeper and do more 3D cutting, which is what I want to do in the future. Uh, and the limit switch that I installed is still workable. I can still adjust it to go down farther just to make sure that the limit switch is down lower than the head of the spindle. So that's just my little safety mechanism that still works on this uh, machine. Again, in the future, I'd like to be able to make it so you can remove this whole spoil board and the whole top and um, the Z axis can go all the way down and then maybe put a uh, smoothie board on this one day and make it a CNC slash 3D printer. So uh, that is the big goals and that's why the CNC machine has such a large Z axis right now. It's because one day I would like this whole Z axis to be able to go all the way down underneath this and down underneath the table, you know, down here into the plenum between the table and the CNC machine and uh, do big 3D prints. But that is a future project. Another thing I changed a bit is I took the, uh, the X gantry and moved it down a bit, just the whole height of it, this aluminum extrusion, the C aluminum extrusion. I just moved down a few inches just to kind of keep the moment a little bit less. There's less torque on this, uh, on this piece of aluminum extrusion. Now this is pretty sturdy, but still I'd rather reduce the amount of torque on the C beam and uh, have better cuts than have that extra, what is it, inch and a half of uh, Z height. I have also installed all of the limit switches for my CNC, which I've talked about in previous videos. Um, these are all bolted on the aluminum extrusion using T-nuts so I can slide them up and down if I need to. And I have crimp connections on all the connectors and I'm just using some, I think this is 14 gauge DHHN stranded just so it can flex around a little bit more. The new CNC is still using the same control panel that I've talked about in a few of my other videos. So if you have any questions about uh, how this control panel works, there's a few videos I have on the e-stop loop and the internals of this and all that good stuff. So check those out. So now I'm going to test to see how accurate this new setup is. Um, again, this is a Gerbil shield running on a homemade CNC, so it's not going to be perfect, but it should be pretty close. So I have the machine set to step in increments of one inch, so let's see what happens here. Not too bad. That's pretty dang close. Going back and forth a few times. Yeah, it's consistent. And as long as it's consistent, you can always tweak the Gerbil settings to, to make it exactly what you need. But um, again, this is a belt-driven CNC on a Gerbil shield, so it's never going to be, you know, 100% on. Now the x-axis has the same timing belts as the y-axis, so it should be exactly the same settings on the Gerbil shield. Um, it's got the same timing belts, the same pulleys, but we're going to just double check it. Eh. Ah, it's close. Uh, again, I'll go on the Gerbil settings and tweak it a little bit, but at least it's consistent. 
So I programmed the CNC to cut a perfect three inch diameter circle. It's gonna cut on the outside perimeter of this. So the diameter inside of the circle should be exactly three inches. So let's see what we get here. Move that slowly out of the way. Let's see what we got here. Huh, that's pretty good. Let's see if you can get a better look at this. That's pretty dang good, people. I'm happy with that. So it's about three inches that way. I'm happy. All right, CNC 2.0 is a success. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Please subscribe if you want to see more CNC stuff. And thank you very much for watching.